Welcome to Electron Online. Here's part three to that problem. Now we're going to try to find the velocity at the bottom of the, of the hill after the ball rolls up the incline and then goes off the cliff, eventually hits the bottom again. What will, what will be the velocity in the y direction? What will be the velocity in the x direction? What will be the final velocity? And then ultimately, what will be the rotational kinetic energy when it hits the bottom? What will be the translational kinetic energy? And what will be the total final energy? Now remember what we found in initially, that the initial energy at the bottom of the hill was equal to 560 joules. The question is, when it then hits the ground here, does it still have 560 joules of energy? It should, because there's no energy loss due to, to, to friction, so the final energy should equal the initial energy. Let's go find out. First of all, what we're going to do here is treat this as a projectile motion. We have an object that's moving off the cliff. V at the top, we found in the previous video, was equal to 16.1245 meters per second. I kept a few extra significant figures there. Well, they're not really that significant, but we keep them there so we don't have a round off error. So let's find out at the bottom of the hill, since it's moving in this direction as a projectile, it should still be the same as at the top in the x direction. This should still be 16.1245 meters per second. There should be a meter sign here, m for meter per second. What about v final in the y direction? Well, that velocity can be found by assuming the object drops from that height with an initial velocity of zero in the y direction. We can use this equation, v, oh, not v final, what we need is we need y equals y initial plus v initial in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared, and we're looking for time, time in the air, so we can then find velocity uh, final in the y direction. The final height will be zero, the initial height is 10, the initial velocity in the y direction is zero, and g is a minus 9.8 meters per second squared when we do kinematics. So this becomes minus 4.9 t squared. Moving this to the other side, we have 4.9 t squared is equal to 10, or t is equal to the square root of 10 divided by 4.9. With a calculator, let's find out what that's equal to. 10 divided by 4.9, take the square root of that, and we get 1.4289 1 seconds. Again, I keep a few extra figures there not to have a round off error. Based upon that, we can now find the final velocity. V final in the y velocity is equal to V initial in the y velocity plus G times T. Well, this would be equal to zero minus 9.8 times 1.4286. Notice times 9.8, that is equal to hmm, 14 meters per second exactly. So by the time the ball then finally hits the ground in the y direction, V final in the y direction is equal to 14 meters per second. And we have the V final in the x direction. Now using Pythagorean theorem, we can find V final. V final is going to be equal to the square root of V final in the x direction squared plus V final in the y direction squared, which is equal to the square root of 16.1245 squared plus 14 squared. All right, what do we get for that? So we get 16.1245 squared Hmm, that's exactly 260, so 260 plus 14 squared, that's 196, and we take the square root of that, we end up with 21.354, 354 meters per second. That's now the final velocity. Now we're ready to answer the ultimate question, what is the rotational kinetic energy when it hits the bottom? What is the translational kinetic energy when it hits the bottom? And what is the total energy final? Let's do the translational kinetic energy first. It had a certain amount of rotational velocity when it went off the cliff, and after it loses touch with the ground and it's flying through the air as a projectile, the rotational kinetic energy will remain constant, which means that the final rotational kinetic energy kinetic energy rotational final 
must equal the kinetic energy rotational at the top because it's not going to slow down its rotation, it's not rubbing up against anything, there's no forces retarding the rotation, and so we can say that this would be equal to 104 joules. Now to calculate the translational final kinetic energy, that would be 1 half mv final squared, and of course we have the final velocity squared here, that would be equal to 1 half times the mass 2, times 21.354 squared. The kinetic energy total final, I should say translational final, is squaring that number times 1, because 2 times 1 half that cancels out, and that gives us 456 joules. Now let's add those two up together and see if we end up with the original 560 joules. So kinetic, or kinetic energy final is equal to kinetic energy translational final plus kinetic energy rotational final which is equal to 456 joules plus the 104 joules which is 560 joules which is exactly the same as the total energy we started with at the beginning of the problem which means that through the entire process even though the energy changes from one form to another from translational and rotational kinetic energy to a different, different translational kinetic energy, a different rotational kinetic energy, including potential energy, and then when it finally hits the ground again, the total, the total energy here is again equal to the energy it had at the very beginning of the problem. And that's how we can see how energy always changes form, but the total energy always remains the same. And that's how it's done.